All right, so we're here in the Synapse test lab and this is the stock GTR exhaust for that thing over there, the, that GTR. And we've got two identical uh, airflow machines here. One of them's hooked up to the stock exhaust so we can measure the flow. And if you look at the stock one, put the sensor right there, and you go over there. Shit, how hard. About 4,000, 5,000 feet per minute is what it's moving out of the uh, airflow machine. Obviously, that gets attenuated as you drop down into stock exhaust. But if you look, we've got the sensor right there. That's moving 1,700, 1,800 feet per minute. And you look at the distribution of exhaust here. And if you compare just from that point to that point, about 1,300, 1,400, a little bit slower. There's moving out of there. Now let's go over here. Let's see what this thing's moving. That thing's moving like 1,600, 1,800 feet per second. That's almost 20% more flow favoring that side of the exhaust system. That's on that port. Amazingly, on this port, it's about the same. It's pretty balanced. So on this stock GTR exhaust, the one coming out of the... What side is that? That's coming out of the driver's side, right? It should be driver's side. One coming out of the driver's side actually doesn't flow as much as the one coming out of the passenger side. But it's interesting because you can't just add up the air speeds because the diameters and the surface area to volume ratio will tend to attenuate the speed and the friction at the boundary layer. Oh, fucking jets. I love the sound of freedom! Sorry, just those pilots know that they don't have to go in full blast all the time. Um, but it's pretty interesting. You can't just add up the numbers and go 1,700 times 4 because you have to take into account the change in diameter over there. We'll see what the ones like that we did.